What up, this is your boy Joe Flizzo, and you are watching the Horde series. Boom! <laughs> Ain't nothing like the old what school. What more can I say? I wouldn't be here today if the old school. I remember Mr. Magic. The 80s had the best movies, you know. And like, if you watch like movies from the 80s, like Back to the Future, or just any 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 TV series on 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 TV, you wanna see like fly sneakers. My first proper pair of shoes was actually my dad's. I was maybe 10 or 11, and I would try them on, thinking like, okay, I'm already. Because he, he, he wears a size 10, 10 and a half. I mean, until today I can't fit his shoes. Cause, but the minute I, I, I hit eight, size eight, I was like stuffing it with socks. And like, yo, these are my shoes, you know? So those are my first. And it wasn't like any regular pair of Air Force Ones. It's like semi high kick. I don't know. It was like, a, it's not your typical material. I started working when I was in high school. Like, from four and from five, I was already working. I was a junior reporter with NST, you know, so I was already making some money writing for the newspaper. Like a lot of people know, I wrote, I wrote the obituary when Tupac died. My, my editor called me, my entertainment editor called me like, hey, do you know who Tupac is? And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm crying right now, I'm sad as hell. This is my favorite rapper. And oh, you know everything about him? Said, of course, I got every single album, you know. Who could you write an obituary? I wrote, I wrote Tupac's obituary in 96 when he died. That was one of my first bylines, you know. So I used to get like maybe 500 ringgit, 400 ringgit per story, you know. So I, would, I was already, I already had a bit of money. Like me and the boys, we used to go to Singapore. We used to go to uh, Far East Plaza and there are a few shops. Basically, it's just a sport shop, you know, like badminton shop like that. But there's one uncle selling Air Force One and he's, no, one, no one was buying them. For him, it was just like plain white shoes, tennis shoes. For us, it was like, yo, this guy, you know. Um, these are the shoes that I have probably gone through like maybe a hundred pairs of Air Force Ones. No, maybe not a hundred, no. but yeah. You know, this is a point where you don't wear them anymore for me. La. But what I do is I, I just, you know, all my, all my shoes that are kind of like, it's not that I don't want to wear them, but you know, in the, my line of work, if I wear these shoes and they're going to think like, ah, uh, business is bad for cartel or something you know <laughs> so I gotta give these away I, I really cherish those days because every pair of shoes had a story behind it my first Jordans was like the retro like retro for silver and white I think they just came out again I remember one time me and, me and my homeboy Moses Moses is my producer I mean you know he's like a big brother so he was one of the few guys that were in our clique that used to collect and he was like, yo, I'm gonna go to Singapore, the year of the horse, Air Force One year of the horse is dropping. And then we took a trip. I drove down, he took a bus and we met in Singapore only to think, find out like, the uncle was like, oh, yeah, not out yet, uh, this one, next one only out. I was like, dude, you know, so sometimes you make that trip and then you don't get the shoe and he actually went back for that shoe. He went back two weeks later and like, yo, I'm here. You want me to get your pair? I said, of course. So, you know, um, every time you put on your shoes, you're going to think of the, like the, the quick flashback, like how you got these shoes, you know? I'm wondering if that's ahead. I remember stick ball, Uncle Hoochie's on the wall. I'm taking leaps on the steps, thinking up the hall. You know, Nike's like family, you know? Like, I believe in the brand. Um, just look at the F MX Zero. Look, that shoe was supposed to come out back in the day. It didn't come out, you know. But what company would keep on believing in a product that they shelved 30 years ago and 30 years later release? You feel me? So, like even the Vapor Max. Okay, I will wear these to the gym. <laughs> I don't know, they, bro. And I told my friend like, who has a pair too? I was like, hey, have you ever tried running in those shoes? And they're like, wow, no. Don't run in those shoes. You cannot run. I'm like, no, they're, they're running shoes, bro. So, I mean, I don't know, but I'm just gonna say this. These Vapor Maxes are like the best running shoes, you know, and I, I love them. I think they realized that we, we were rocking all these rare basketball shoes, so they started seeding us. And yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, um, we used to get stuff, I still have some samples like 
the Nike bosses used to come back from uh, America and just like give us the shoes. Like, oh, you know you like Jordan, so I take uh, this one. I got a pair of Royal uh, uh, that the sample in 2001. It's a sample, it's 0000 of 0000. And that shoe eventually came out years later. Ah, there it is. Boom! So this is, this is the shoe I was talking about, 2001. And, um, this was actually the prototype. Eventually they would make it. Make it. Yeah. Eventually they would make it. This is what you want to see. Zero, 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 off zero, zero, zero. That means you cannot buy this. I wear every single pair I get. I get. Nike gave me those Yeezys, the one, easy ones, three weeks before it released. Three weeks before it released. I smashed them the first day. This girl with high heels stepped on my Yeezys, boom, in the club. I was like, ah, oh, these shoes aren't even out yet. I wear the that I can see the that on ice. <laughs> They look like ninja shoes, right? Yeah. And you will feel like a ninja when you wear this. Trust me. So if you want to be jumping up and down like buildings, these are the shoes you should wear. I love the clots, the clot twos, right? Um, I love the green laces. I actually, I, I never, I didn't really want to buy them. Um, DJ Cast One from New York, uh, from Hot 97, he was in town, and he actually told me like, oh, these shoes are dropping today. So we actually went, called uh, Edwin. From juice we went to juice and he hooked us up with two pairs the day before they came out as you can see jordan one section obviously my favorite um shadow grays uh, standard uh. um oh I, I gotta give a big shout out these are my friends picks 852 you know what i mean brian brian's a good friend of mine you know so uh when they i didn't even know they were gonna drop and uh, they actually had them in crooks. So I went there and the hashtag for the shoe was never in the club. Because they were all white shoes. Guess what Joe Flizzard did? Wore them to the club. And bro, they were so wrecked. They were so wrecked. I was like, I was on the verge of, I, I basically threw them away. They were wrecked. I had a, a, a burn mark. I sent them to Goodfellas and they came back like this. Boom. They were wrecked. Even Azwar was like, bro. There's burn mark, bro. Did you walk through a building that caught on fire or what? You know, did you save a cat from a burning building? I said, I don't know. But yeah. Okay, this is testament to, you know, how I rock my shoes. Because if you don't rock them, they're going to die. Look, that's what happens if you don't rock these shoes. Especially in Malaysian weather. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh my God, oh my God. This will end up on the... We have a wall of death at Goodfellas. Okay, I like... Okay, this one, I, I gotta say, I got this idea from Mayer. Because okay. he does it like this, right? And I don't... I'm not really a sucker for boxes, you know, because plus, a lot of the shoes we buy, you get during when you're overseas and da-da-da, so... Uh, these are the... Sacks. LeBron 9s. I like the LeBron 9s. Like, I got these here. The OGs, but those are the burners right there. Yeah. So, so the yeah. So, rock 'em, stock 'em, rock 'em, stock 'em. <laughs> <laughs> um, but imagine, huh? Just this difference, the price. Man, I don't know. I got these on 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 ice too. You know, I won these ones. See, but then I was like, wow. I told you I love the falls, right? So. Okay, sorry, this room is a bit hot, huh? But because we got a lot of heat. Normal, uh, bro. This one all sun again. Oh, jeez. Normal, uh, huh? This one, uh, This is a gift from a friend of mine, Ash, who's a collector from Singapore. He just came through one one year and like, yo, happy birthday, fam! And he gave me these. I haven't worn them. Never worn them. I don't think I ever will. Yeah, they're kind of messed up here, but again, that's what happens when you don't wear your shoes. Huh? I got, I got a pair that I rock with it. Yeah. Rock them, stock them. Rock them, stock them. Always have 
Stand by one pair, fresh. These are not ordinary IDs, check it out. One of one. This was given to me by Edwin from the clock crew. They, they actually made this. This is like uh, you know, Edison and them, they made this and gave them to Edwin. They made a few pairs, so just for the fam. You know, so. Although they're IDs, but they were done by, by the clock team. You know, look, they got the little clock logo and stuff. So yeah, big shout out to Edwin. Oh man, I love these shoes, dude. This is like when I, I had these like back in the day. And look, they're still good, man. Check it out. These are the silver surfers. This was like maybe 2004, 2003. Sometimes when they say, oh, they name a shoe after something, you know, it doesn't really like, eh. But this for me is like, if Silver Surfer was a shoe, this would be it. But look, yo, check it out. This is what happens when you don't wear your shoes. Invisible Woman. Marvel again. Invisible Woman have already become Kway Teow Goreng. Macam durian sekarang. Pasal tak pakai? Jadi macam ni. But wait. I actually met Spike Lee in Brooklyn because a friend of mine works for Spike Lee. So that's Spike Lee's signature. You know, when I got the Spazax in Brooklyn, I bought two pairs. One. One. So the Spazax, right? Those are the Hancho ones. These are fresh out of the box. Spike Lee's signature. That is Spike Lee's signature. Your kids, who you, if you don't know who Spike Lee is, he gave the same shoes to Obama and signed them to Obama, to Joe. And when I have a video of him signing the shoes for me, and he was like, Joe, these ain't the Spazikes no more. These are called the Obamas, the Baracks. No, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he didn't say Obamas. He said, these are called the Baracks. Because Spike Lee... Uh, prior to that, he had a fundraising dinner at his house that he hosted and Obama came through $60,000 a plate A seat, you know, they raised a few million for Obama Okay These shoes are special. I, I play football But these shoes are super special because Safi Sali wears the same size as me And these were given to me by Safi Sali These were actual Safi Sali boots. He actually wore these in games Right, because um, I was in J I was in JB and I was joining the JDT team for Kickabout, and uh, His Royal Highness Tunggu Makota asked me to join them for a game, but I didn't have any boots. So the coaches went in like, "Hey, who wears size nine? Who wears size nine and a half?" I wear nine and a half, but for for football boots, I wear nine. And Safi Sali just came up like, I wore them three days in a row. I scored a few goals. Shit, no. And then when I wanted to give it back to him, he was like, "Nah, you keep them." So this is a legendary right here. Safi Salim, Malaysia's number one striker. Boom. So when Futura came to town, I was like, everybody got 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 him to sign on like t-shirts and posters. I'm like, nah, he's signing a pair of brand new Air Force Ones. Boom. Futura, my man. Boom. What you know about that? What you know about that? Huh? You can't buy these, man. You can't buy these, man. These are moments in life, okay? These are relationships that are built based on respect. Okay, let's just get it over and done with for the hype beast. You guys know what this is, lah. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Simply because these are my favorite Jordans are, and they're still here, so, you know. These are regular shoes that I love. I call them, they got no name. I call them the Scarfaces. Look like Scarface, right? And they just like, I don't know. They weren't even like a prop, like a hyped up release. But as an Air Force One fan, look at that. Mm. It's like a cross. Yeah, and I got them regular, like $80. I think it's uh, Gary Payton. Gary Payton. Yes. Ah, Gary Payton, yes. Yes. The glove. The glove, the glove. yes, yes, yes. That's where they made it like a glove. Yeah. Yes, you guys are smart. Gary Payton, definitely.
Boom. Thank you, my sis. Well, <laughs> moving to us, you guys know your shit. <laughs> this is my homeboy Rayquan, big brother Rayquan, my big brother Ghostface. They came, they came down for Future. It got shut down. So what happened was they ended up chilling in Subang, and you know, the OGs right there. Boom. Cause, Cause a lot of people be rapping Wu Tang, but nobody raps Wu Tang like I do in Malaysia. Bro. <laughs> Once again, my name is Joe Flizzo, and you have been watching the hardest series. Keep it locked. <laughs> I'm wondering if that's ahead. I remember stick ball, Uncle Hoochie's on the wall. I'm taking.